Nick Cherwing. Where are you from? Santa Rosa, California. What did you do out there? What did I do? Man, yeah. I was I was born there. Yeah. I uh skateboarded a lot. Oh. Yeah. Grew up skateboarding, playing drums, being yeah. a little little hooligan. Nick, yeah. not for nothing, man. I've seen skateboarders before and they don't look like you. Yeah. Well, I didn't look like this when I was fifteen. <laughs> I probably put on <laughs> eighty pounds <laughs> since that. Eighty? Yeah. Well, you know what's funny? I don't maybe, I don't know. Holy smokes. Yeah, probably. Dude. Probably that or more. What are you eating? Ooh. There's a baby. <laughs> I'm eating the cookies like that little baby right there. Dude. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So so you went you grew up in California. Yeah. How long were you there? Uh till I was eighteen. I think I moved out two weeks after I turned eighteen and went straight to college. I had to I was ready to get can I cuss? Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, I was, I was ready to get the fuck out of Dodge, as they say. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. We're gonna have to talk a little bit about that. So let's. Yeah. And I like to go about this. We're gonna start where you're at right now. Yeah. But then we're gonna throw it back, dude. We're gonna go digging in the crates. Cool. And cool. then we're gonna talk about what we got coming up next. Yeah. For your vision, for your life. Cool. It seems like you're in an incredible spot. You've got some uh, amazing podcast guests you've got uh, an incredible trajectory in your career which is uh, really fun to watch on social media thanks man yeah um you're doing big things you're you're a go-getter uh positivity the light in the dark so where are you at right now with things what yeah. have you been up to i'm just gonna move this yeah so right now i am really focused on building my business which is coaching for specifically i think we might need an airplane Oh, is that is that doing anything? I think so. All right, let's do. Let's one sec. Yeah, dude. Airplane mode. Did that is that better? Yep. I can't hear that ticking anymore. We're we're good. Okay. Tech, dude. Yeah, you got it. Crazy. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been focusing on building my business, which is yeah, coaching artists, uh, specifically music producers and DJs. Yeah. So, you know, I realize I, I had a background of, of playing sports myself. I was a rugby player in high school and college and had a lot of structure, a lot of guidance, practices, drills, teamwork, and that allowed me to become really successful in, that, in sports. But there was a time where also I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be a rock star when I was a kid. I love, you know, Jimi Hendrix was like my idol when I was 10. I was like, I want to be a rock star and play the drums, play the guitar, produced music, even rapped with my friends. But that journey of being an artist is so wide open and there's no real one path to take, which is great. But there's also that a lot of artists just don't have guidance. You know, they're really left to figure it out on your own. And so I was like, well, how can we bring some of that same structure and support and guidance and teamwork that we get from the world of sports, you know, that makes you know, athletes so successful, uh, and bring that into the world of artists, you know, someone that's out there chasing their dream of trying to win a Grammy award. That's the same thing as someone out there chasing their dream of trying to go win the NFL. Yeah. But the kid that's doing it in the NFL has a lot of support. Right. So I've found a really cool lane for myself there. Cause it kind of doesn't really exist. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, uh, Segment is very unique. Yeah. What'd you say? Yeah. Yeah. And especially anybody like you, especially in the, you know, I'm really in the, the DJ line, the EDM, you know, kids that want to tour the world, uh, play music festivals. So then I have a background in the music business and industry. So it was just, that was just kind of who I was around. It all just kind of happened. But, um, but now I'm really seeing the demand for it and, and the vision's becoming more clear and really like adding more structure to how this actually works structure yeah seems to be a, a apparent theme for you right now yeah is that right yeah yeah Tell i mean me more about that like how has that presented itself to you I and mean, why is it so important well even for my for myself i've just been I, i'm very i am very much like a loosey goosey winging it kind of person like that's kind of more my vibe <laughs> yeah uh which is cool because fun because you can you know I, you can i can flow i can adapt i can put me in any room i can bounce around uh, but, and I've kind of done that with my business for a while. I was just sort of fell into this thing. It wasn't like, I was like, oh, I'm going to launch a business and this is my game plan and this is how it's going to work. Here's Dude. my, here's my business plan. Here's, you know, it was just, I just, it just happened. 
and I'm like, you know, four years into it, like full time now. Um, and now I'm like, you know, I should probably get a little bit more structured. I should probably, you know, really start learning what does it take to actually run a business versus just being self-employed, which is different, you know? So I'm, I'm, that's the season that I'm in right now is like, what are the, the systems and the processes and all that kind of stuff? We, we, we say this in the office going from entrepreneurial to purposeful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Amateurs wing it. Professionals have processes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're professionalizing your segment. Yeah. And it's the same thing I talk to artists about because a lot of artists are out there. They're just making art. Mm. And that's cool. That's fun. Yeah. But you might just be making art in your bedroom for the rest of your life. If you want to, if you want to tour the world and accomplish those goals and accomplish those dreams, got then it. you also got to run a business. And yeah. if you're going to run a business, you need to have that structure. You need to have that uh, just, yeah, that, the, everything that comes with that, that, that work ethic, that yeah. grind mentality. Yeah. Yeah. It does a good job when I think of artists when it comes to, uh, like paintings and such Alec monopolies, this guy out of, uh, I think he's out of Miami Yeah, and do people pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for his stuff, it's but crazy. he's working it, dude. He's got his YouTube channel. Yeah. He's networking with top celebrities in the world. Oh yeah. He's a super cool guy. Yeah. But if he was, again, right to your point, if he's sitting at his house making all this art and not doing anything with it, it's pointless. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But you're spearheading this. So I think it's so fascinating because you are very unique in your, in your space and you're like writing the book totally on how to do it. Yeah. In case uh, other people adopt yeah. your model. Yeah. They, they might. Yeah. They actually might. Dude. And, and I might, it's a real thing. And I might literally be writing the book. I've had it requested and suggested literally multiple times. And, and it would, it would help just to put it all, to get all the things that I teach, all the, all the thoughts that I have, the lessons that I've, you know, accumulated over the years of like, all right, let's put this on paper. And I'm kind of going through that process right now, just building like a, uh, you know, an online coaching program, filming video modules, things like that. Just again, adding the, the platform, this, this, the, the systems and the structure to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Using Kajabi. Kajabi. Yeah. It's great. That's the spot. Oh yeah. 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 Our friend, uh, our good pal, Brendan. Yeah. 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 Our, our buddy, Brendan Burchard, where we met. That's it. Yeah. Oh our, yeah. Fun good, facts. Our, our homie B dog. Dude, that was I was, I was at a conference out in like uh, Phoenix or somewhere out, out West and I had tickets to that conference. I was like, man, should I go? But then I just, I was like, you know what? I feel like if, even if I'm there for an hour, oh yeah, it's going to be amazing content. Cause anything that guy says is awesome. Like, yeah. Yeah. Dude. There's no throwaways. No. Everything is a, everything is a home run. Every minute, every, every minute is like a, a nugget of wisdom. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, we met at Brendan Burchard's deal yeah. down here. Is, you know, he, is he coming back? What's, what's I'm up? sure he is. I, yeah. I, I'm I'm such a big fan of him. Like he's becoming. I was very much a big Tony Robbins guy. He's kind of the one that got me into the personal development space. Yeah. But I really like Brendan's approach, and I'm I'm really looking at his whole I don't know formula, just the whole concept of high performance coaching. All right. How do you become? How do you be a high performer? And that's really what I'm structuring my uh, coaching around now, which Dude. is a little bit more of like how to be a, a high performer. Cause back, back to what you were saying, it's like that difference between being an amateur and a professional. It's something I talk about all the time is an amateur. And this comes from a great book by Steven Pressfield called the war of art. A lot of artists, they're amateurs. They just create when they feel like creating, they create when they're inspired. The professional sits down every day at nine o'clock and starts working and starts creating. Mm -hmm. Gary Se or Jerry Seinfeld. Oh yeah. Had the chain on his calendar. Yeah. Wouldn't break the chain. Yeah. X every day. Yeah. Yeah. Just putting in the work. But he's creative though. That's how you get good. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so I, that's where I, I was like, man, I'm talking about this all the time. I got to do the same shit for myself. I was like, am I doing that in my business or am I just kind of, you know, winging it? And so I've been really stepping into this new, yeah, this new phase of just being really committed to the, 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 the mission. Yeah. Committed to the mission. Yeah. Nick. I do love that. Sick, dude. So what would you say you're most proud of as so far in your line of work? Mm. Oh, man. Um, I, on the one hand, more broad, like I'm, I'm just, I'm very proud that I've been able to create a business that has been, you know, sustainable for myself to live and, and you know, it's like making the jump from working for somebody else to working for yourself, like fully, like I'm a hundred percent fully out on my own, you know, and it's been four years. Dude. So, you know, oh. not, not that I'm a millionaire yet, but like I've done, 
I've done okay. You know, I've, I've, I make more money than I did at my old job. You're like, kidding. yeah, that's, that's, that's a phenomenal. It's cool. It's, pre it's pretty cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely proud of that side of it, but you know, what I'm really proud of is just the, the transformations that I've been able to be a part of and witness. And, and I've coached probably a, 130 people one-on-one -on -one. dang yeah well over 100 people at this point and to i didn't know that get text messages from people that i worked years ago that are like hey man like i just want to thank you for the work that we did because like my life is in such a different place now you know and so i i get literally at, almost every day like some sort of win is coming back just because it's like it's like johnny appleseed planting seeds all over the country, right? I've yes, just planted dude. so many seeds that now I'm, I'm, I'm at a seat at a, at a place in my, my life and my career where I'm seeing that these hundred people, not every single one of them, but you know, a lot of them are, you know, just at a different place in their life and being able to receive the, the gratitude and, and still have the relationships with them. You know, that's something yeah. I always tell my clients. I'm like, yo, once we work together, like I'm in your corner for the rest of your life. It's not, you, you know, we just do our little three month term and I never talk to you again. I mean, Sometimes that happens. Sometimes we just go our separate ways, but some people have become like, they're like my brothers, they're my sisters, they're my family. And I'm invested in their, in their journey. I want to see them winning that Grammy award someday, you know? Whoa. So yeah, that's, that's the most rewarding. And I'd say what I'm the most proud that's of. That's freaking nourishing, man. It's yeah. so fulfilling. To very much. To do that. And very much. And think about this in, in four short years, you not only are making more, financially but you're also calling the shots yeah you're yeah. calling the shots which is kind of invaluable yeah like i told you before we started yeah i took a nap before this it took a on, nap on a friday at noon nap and nick because i can call the fucking shots i'm taking <laughs> nap and nick and take a nap whenever he damn wants to dude but, yeah <laughs> it's fired up friday right there <laughs> nice dude yeah but yeah. i think it's interesting that that you get like this this innate desire to work even harder on let's say a Friday night or a Sunday when everybody else is kind of fluffing off. It, it's just, this is a weird thing that just, it's, I'm just noticing it. Dude, I don't, I haven't always been that way, Yeah, but it's like mm -hmm. a new thing. Yeah. Maybe it's like that hunter mentality. You know, when everybody's quote unquote sleeping, you're out collecting. Yeah. Maybe who yeah. knows? Yeah. That, that, that's you're not alone. Yeah. And I wonder well, what that is. It's also, here, here's, here's actually a really weird concept to think about yeah. is uh you know like i'll notice a lot of times on a sunday i feel like i feel like i have more space or i feel like i can get more done in, in a weird way mm -hmm. so i'll end up like working on the weekends but the whole idea that we even have a weekend it's all made up right. and and when you work for yourself it's like i don't have a nine to five i don't have to be at an office at nine o'clock i don't come in on monday you know, every box. every day is the same a friday or a tuesday or a thursday it literally makes no difference to me the rest of the world is on this made up system that somebody created that said you work Monday through Friday, nine to five, five o'clock on Friday, you get off and you know, and then the, you get to rest those two days when you step into the world of entrepreneurship uh, and you, and, and really, you know, don't have that boss or that requirement anymore. Like reality changes a bit. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I was saying is like, I, I might be on a Tuesday. I'm like, I might not feel like doing anything on a Tuesday and I want to rest and I want to take the day off. And then on a Sunday, I might be, you know, grinding or a Friday night. I might stay in and cause I'm, in, I'm, I'm inspired. I want to work on this. So it's an interesting thing that I've been yeah, feeling into. Yeah. Feeling into speaking of that, our friend coach Charles, when I had that meeting with him, mm -hmm. he was telling me to feel more. Mm-hmm. Because he says that a lot of times people go towards feeling happy. It's like, no, I don't need to do that. Feel more. Mm -hmm. Feel yeah. more everything. Feel more everything. Yeah, we are. But why? Well, because we should. Because it's the human experience. That's it. The human experience is the whole, the whole nutshell. It's not just part of it, you know? Well said. Yeah. Remember that. Yeah, it is the whole nutshell. <laughs> nutshell I love is a good is one. The right word, but, <laughs> like but here, here's the metaphor that I that I really like. I learned this in my my coach training program that I did. You know, they talked about uh, a piano, yeah. and a lot of times, you know, like music producers that I work with, they might have like a like a 24 key keyboard. All right, there's 12 notes in a scale, so you might have like 24, maybe 36. Uh, you know, and, and it's like those are just the notes that you're playing. 
and this is how we live our life oftentimes. It's like, oh, I'm just, I'm just only using these notes or I'm only feeling these feelings and these emotions. But really, you, you got the whole, the whole piano. I think 88 keys is like the, 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 the real full-size piano. And yeah. so yeah. you're going to make the best music possible when you can reach way over here and you can hit those highs, but you can also really reach down there and hit those lows. And, and a lot of us, were just living our life just in this kind of, kind of gray zone. You know, we, like, we get a little bit happy, we get a little bit sad. Yeah, but who told you that? Who said that? This was this was and was that when I did my life coaching certification program? That was a metaphor that they brought up. It's a freaking good metaphor. Yeah, like how how much more beautiful is that piece of music going to sound if you use all eighty eight keys? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, that's really freaking helpful. Thanks for sharing that, man. This is freaking Buzz welcome. <laughs> all right, so we gotta throw it back, man. We gotta throw it back. How how was your uh? How was your upbringing? Mm. How was it? What was it like living in your home, man? Your parents. Yeah, you know, I I come from what you would label a, a broken home. My uh, my home was kind of crazy. Um, my parents split up when I was five, and I was pretty much raised by my you know more so by, by my mom. My dad would we'd go to my dad's house on the weekends, but you know he got started drinking a lot. It just became like a kind of absentee alcoholic father so I didn't really have that father support and guidance and figure and so I was mostly really living in a house full of crazy fucking women <laughs> how many my uh well my I have a my mom and my two older my older sister and younger sister two sisters yeah and uh but there was just there was a lot of fighting with them you know mm -hmm. like they just did not get along I was very much the peacekeeper mm -hmm. I think that's why I became a coach it's because I learned like, hey, there's drama and chaos happening. Like, how do I make everybody feel better? You yeah. know, how do I, yeah, how do I navigate through this? So, yeah, it was, it was kind of, it was kind of crazy. It was, it was a wild time. My, my older sister ran away from home when she was 14. What? Yeah, she was just on the streets selling drugs for like two years. What, what Can't, prompted that initial jump for her? She, yeah, shout out. Shout out Tara, I fucking love you. She's a boss. She's a fucking amazing person. She turned it around. Oh yeah, yeah. Cool. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. But, but when she was, you know, I think she started just hanging out with the wrong kids, you know, older kids or whatever. She starts selling weed, making a little money. Her and my mom just fought all the time. And so she was like, what were they fighting about? I'm just, I don't know, being a, what do, t what do 13 year old, 12 year old teenage kids? Cell phone, kids? I want a phone, no. All right. This before, this was before phones. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she was just like, she was just like, yo, she's like, uh, you know, I can go make my own fucking money. I don't need you. Like, I got people that will take me in. I got, you know, I can go like sell drugs and probably make more money than you're making. And so she just like, she was just out. She just disappeared. Wow. She was, I, what yeah. a conversation. You need to have her on to talk about, you know, her crazy story. Yeah. So, Where's she at, by the way? Uh, they're up in Willits. Willits? Yeah, it's like a- California? Texas? Yeah, California. Yep. North, North California. Yeah, yeah, Northern California. So it, um. But yeah, yeah, she's just a, she's a hustler, you know? Um, Three crazy women. Yeah. One house. Yeah. Plus you. Yeah. A lot of uh, fights. A lot of fights. Yeah. It, it, it kind of turned me, you know, when I saw my older sister getting into trouble, I saw how much pain that was causing. And so yeah. it kind of sent me in the other direction. I was like, oh, like, don't let me not cause any trouble. Let me not be a burden at all. Like I, I, I got straight A's. Like I like, I took care of myself. I became very, very independent because it was like, I didn't, there was so much drama in the household. I didn't want to be another burden. So I was like, look, I got, when I was 10, I found skateboarding. I found drumming. You know, I, I you know, hung out with good kid, good kids in schools, got, got straight A's. I was like, I'm, I'm good. Like you really? Yeah. So I, I took care of myself from a pretty young age. No hiccups along the way. I partied. I loved partying, but what kind? What kind of partying? Yeah. Oh, what did you do? I used to throw fucking ragers at my at my house at high school. <laughs> ragers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I started playing rugby. That was not having a father around and being around all these crazy women is what drove me to uh, seek out uh, masculine, just masculine energy. And I'd started partying like my freshman year of high school. Mm. Uh, but a lot of the party, a lot of the guys at the parties were all oh, the rugby players. They're the ones always throwing the parties. I was like, these guys are cool. I want to hang out with them. So I, I didn't know it at the time, but I was seeking that. Yeah. Just some of that masculine energy camaraderie. And, uh, you know, fortunately had a, an amazing coach, you know, who's very much like a father figure for me. And What's his name? Alan Petty. Shout cool. out Alan yeah. Petty. Fucking one of the most amazing men in the world. Yeah. Nice. He's changed the lives of, you know, hundreds of hundreds of people. Um, you know, he helped me at the time I was just a little 
pot smoking, skateboarding, you know, drummer kid. And, uh, you know, went out for rugby and all of a sudden he, you know, he, he helped me find, uh, this potential inside of me that I didn't know I had. It's amazing yeah. that he was so patient despite all the people in his life, all the kids in the school, that he was patient to work with you and help you explore that. Yeah, he he wanted to he wanted to win games, you know, <laughs> and he found he he knew how to yeah pull the best out of people. What do you remember most about him? Mm. I mean, I still you know still talk to him regularly. He uh, he well, he was you know he was he was from the Marines. He was uh, he was kind of crazy. He was really he was really funny. I remember. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he would he would just tell super inappropriate jokes, and this is this is rugby stuff. But yeah, uh, locker room chat, locker room chat for sure. You know, probably a bit of toxic masculinity, you know, yeah. but, uh, he, he just had a, he had a way of pushing people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He could, those Marines do that. Yeah. Yeah. There, there it's was, just what they're made to do. Yeah. There was just like a standard. There was just a, like, we show up and we play a hundred percent all the time, you know, and regiment was, discipline. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking about literally to the, uh, this is, this is probably a huge lesson. I haven't thought about this in a long time, but I remember the first, not the, not the first game I played, but the first time I, um, he put me in as like, kind of like the quarterback position and it was like a tournament against a Tongan team. I don't know if you've ever seen the, the Pacific Islander is about twice the size of, yeah. of the average, you know, yeah. high school kid put yeah. it, put, put me in against this, this team in the middle of a hailstorm, oh. full blown, like hailing sideways. And, and, and I think that's, that was so much of what I got out of those experiences was just like, put yourself in, put yourself in situations where you're in way over your head and you're, it's super uncomfortable, you know, it's, yeah. it's like he, you know, the first game I ever played against was against a college team. Right. Well, first time I ever played that position was against like one of the, you know, really, really gnarly team, but it, putting, it's like putting yourself in those kinds of situations and then surviving them. You realize like, Oh, like I'm, I can survive anything. I'm pretty tough. Dang. So there's a lot of courage. I think that comes with that. But yeah, he, uh, yeah, he did a lot of that. It's freaking awesome. Of this like, yeah, you, you can do it. You can, yeah. yeah, you got this. Think about all the texts he's getting, you know, like you're getting the texts. He's probably getting the texts. Dude. Right. I mean, that's again, back to why my coach, you know, I think yeah. that, that, yeah, it's funny too. I really haven't like put, <laughs> put all this together, but I think that, yeah, he, you know, that whole experience, I think he made such a significant impact on my life, um, that I probably, yeah, followed in, in his footsteps in a way. So five years old parents split up. Any, uh, any rebellion happened at that point in time on your end, or you said you kind of went in the opposite direction. Well, I was, I was one of those weird anomalies where I was, I got straight A's. I was in AP classes, was super popular, played, you know, um, played sports, but also, you know, knew the kids that were in gangs and, you know, knew the nerds from the AP classes, knew the jocks uh, cause they would come to my parties. And, uh, I was, I, when I say that, when I say I was an anomaly, it was like, I, I got straight A's, but I also partied really hard, you know? So I threw a lot of parties <laughs> in my, in, in my, uh, my high school days. When did you overdo fun. it? Um, definitely in college. Yeah. 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 Col Cause then college, you're like, there's, you know, you're fully out on your own. You know, I didn't really have a lot of a guy, like parenting and guidance in high school. That's why I got away with all of that. But yeah. then in college, it definitely, yeah. Got a little bit crazier being in a frat, also playing rugby. Yeah. No, no rules. What did it look no, like? No guidance. Look, look, you're at these parties. What, what was happening? Oh, we were just going nuts. What does that mean? It was like going nuts. I don't even know. <laughs> How do you go nuts at a college party? Have you ever been to a college party before? Uh, oh, no. You were you were in the Navy. Yeah, I kind of skipped that part. Oh, man. Yeah, oh, dude. Dude, you would have loved it. It was a blast. So what, like, like what? drugs and stuff? <laughs> no, I, was, I wasn't really into drugs. I was I was a big drinker. I drank a lot. Drink. Yeah. Okay. I, I drank a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, it's funny, too. It's like I look back and at college and it was like, yeah, I would go out and just drink until we blacked out or threw up or fucking got, went to jail or did something crazy. Like we were, you know, this was very much like jackass era where it the was, best. it was like, it was this like competitive. Yeah. Not that so it was like competitive drinking and it was like, who's going to drink the most tonight? Who's going to do the craziest shit tonight? And yeah. it's just funny looking back where it was like, who was telling us that this is not good? And not healthy like it would just sort of be laughed at and i think there's this cultural thing 
where you look at college kids and you're just like, oh yeah, that's just part of being in college. That's just part of being, you know, a young college kid as you take beer bongs until you throw up and laugh about it the next day. And it's like, well, you know, that's not really healthy. And it took me a while to figure that out myself. I'm like, I, and I wish, I'm like, we're, I wish I had somebody there trying to point me in a better direction, but we, I don't know. We don't really have that. Who for, does? For that, that generation, right? Who there. does in college? Yeah. Who's got it? No, I don't know. I don't know. People with parents that, that, that are around. That are around. <laughs> yeah. Who don't even want that though. Yeah. And you want that freedom when you're out of college. It's true. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. And that's a weird thing too. It's like, yeah, I remember my, my best friend in college too. Is like, he, he actually had, you know, very different, you know, really upper middle class, good family, you know, private school. Yeah. But he had the same thing for him. It was like just coming from the opposite direction where he had so much, uh, so much parenting that he was just like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to go crazy now. And that's a very common story too. Dang. Yeah. yeah. That's my cousin. But I just, you know, it's like, yeah. him. it was, it was fun. But at the same time, I, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to say I have regrets of it. It's part of my story. No regrets? No regrets. Mm. No, no. Um, but it's like, yeah, I just, I do hope for things to be different for, you know, the, for kids out there. Cause I wasn't really, I don't think I was actually really happy. You know, I was just, why? Well, I didn't love anything. It's like you go to college. Yeah. Like you, I'm kind of, I was kind of programmed by society to think that you need to go to college to be successful. Yeah. And so I go to college and I'm like, well, I don't like any of these majors. I don't like any, you know, the school part of it. I hated all of it. I like partying was fun. I like my whole life for four years. Networking. Yeah. Networking to a certain extent. <laughs> I don't really talk to that many people from college though. It's like, I was, I don't know. It was, uh, I, I think, I think it's really important for young people to figure out what lights them up. Mm. Not only young people, old people too. What lights you up? That should be your driving force. That should be your inner compass in life is go towards the thing that lights you up. And I don't think that college really sets you up for that. It's more like, hey, here are the 10 things that you can choose from and try to fit yourself into one of these. And it's usually coming from the perspective of whatever's gonna make you the most money, maybe what your parents want you to do. But I think that every single one of us has something inside of us that makes us feel alive and makes us feel excited and, 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 and lights us up. And, you got to figure out what that is and chase that shit, you know. And it was really eye-opening for me when I graduated college and I moved to LA. I started working in the music industry, and I'm meeting a 24-year-old kid who started his own company or is an artist, and they're making like over a million dollars a year. And they're like, "Yeah, I, 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 I didn't go to college. I chased my dream. I chased my passion, and I'm making ten times your doctor parents are," <laughs> you know. At, at, at half their age. And so that kind of was an eye opener. I was like, oh, this, all these rules that we think we have to follow, that's all fucking made up. It, it is made you have up. to make up your own. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, else outwitting the devil, outsmarting the devil, something like that by Napoleon Hill. You ever heard of that? Book? I've heard, you know, I've read Think and Grow Rich. It's a it, uh, such a, such a classic. I never read that one though. Yeah. I'll, I'll dive a little bit into this. So at the end of the book, he said, if they ever republish this book, um, he, he, I forget. He's like, I can't, I can't publish this piece right now because if I do, it'll get me in a lot of trouble. Mm. So then they republished the book years and years later, like in the past couple, 10 years or so. And they added that piece. And that piece talks about how the public school system is geared towards simply getting the employees. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I'm thinking about it. You're taught how to sit down and follow directions and sit at a desk all day and raise your hand when you have to pee. You're, you're taught how to follow orders. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. This, this is when we get into some weird, like Illuminati shit, you know, like who created this system to Rockefeller's pre prepare, to yeah, prepare school uh, system. generations of people to just, yeah, have jobs. But I don't know. I think that's changing. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the, cause the internet, the internet has totally changed things. The kids are, kids are growing up now watching Gary, Gary V and, Oh, they're dude, like incredibly everybody wants to be, yeah, I think people, you know, realize like, oh, you can be an entrepreneur. I mean, I make, you know, I make six figures from my fucking phone, right? It's like, it's like, it, it, and, yeah, and, and anybody can, anybody can. It's, it's pretty dope. Literally, it, it, yeah. you don't have to go, yeah, I don't know, the sky's the limit. I mean, you have little kids that are like unwrapping presents on YouTube that are making like a million dollars a year. I hear about that. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's. it's wild what's possible when we unwrap presents 
huh? Why don't we unwrap presents? Dude, that could be our YouTube channel. We could do that. Un unboxing. And yeah. and yeah, we'll just do man stuff though. Yeah. 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 Man shit. Yeah. yeah. With knives. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where we just at? Or... <laughs> <laughs> we do we just have that people just send us stuff and we don't know what it is. Oh, surprise, surprise. unboxing. Yeah, surprise unboxing. Like you send stuff to us and then we open it up and then you see our reaction. All right, let's make a quick let's make a quick episode right now. <laughs> All right. What's happening, everybody? My name's Greg. I'm Nick. It is our first episode of the what's in this box what's in the box youtube video yeah what's in the box <laughs> so do us a favor send us some stuff yeah please yeah, the address will, is in, in the will, description we will unwrap anything you send us and we'll reveal it yeah all right yeah yeah, yeah. this is gonna be a thing i can't wait this is gonna be the most fun <laughs> project ever send it in all right awesome awesome it's good episode one done Dude, we're, mil we're we're gonna be millionaires only a matter shit. of time yeah, yeah. so <laughs> You're uh, you're you're in California. Where'd you go to school? UC San Diego. UC. What did that say for? The University of California, San Diego. Is that in La Jolla? That's in La Jolla. Yeah, that's the Ooh. that's the nerdy smart one. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, so I went from kind of the hood, yeah, to La Jolla, which is like yeah. where the football players live. Culture shock. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. How was that? What was that experience like? Other than the partying? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was cool. I mean, it, I think I, I was just so excited to. to be gone to be out you but know why? I felt like I I think I I I kind of outgrew my town you know just I always felt like I was meant for kind of bigger and better things and, mm. and had just I, yeah I had outgrown the, the fishbowl that I was in so it was time to get into a bigger one how small is your town how many people in your class uh I mean our school was our school was 1600 probably like 400 people in a per class mm -hmm. yeah de decent size yeah. it's like a, I think a Maybe a hundred and seventy thousand people in, in the in the town. Yeah. It's, it's a decent size. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like a small town. But not big enough for you. No. No, no, no. No, bigger, better things. So you went off to college to a super nice area. If you don't know what La Jolla is like, it's on the freaking cliffs yeah. of San Diego. Oh my God. It's nice. How much time did you spend spend in Black's Beach? Ooh, yeah. I think our, our probably first day of school we were down there. Yeah. With your, yeah. Yeah. Did you good stories? I didn't bring your binoculars, did you? <laughs> no. No. Good. Uh, You're not that kind of guy. No. Just check. <laughs> I'm playing. But, yeah, I like well, the, the nude, the nude beach. Yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 the nude beach. Never got naked down there. No, yeah, no. definitely. You definitely every now and then would we'll see, uh, would we'll see some, some, some skin maybe. Yeah, yeah. And, but it's not the kind you want to see. No, it's like a sixty-year-old no. fat dude. <laughs> it's always a, it's always a fucking old fat dude. Dude, I was there with my wife one time and our two friends that live here, and I was like, let's go to the beach in La Jolla. I just because I knew that La Jolla was super nice. And I knew that that walk down the beach was awesome, like down the cliffs and things, a very unique experience. Mm -hmm. Of course, I knew it was a nude beach, but like, you know, it was low key, whatever. It's not like populated with tons of yeah. ton ding dongs hanging out. <laughs> so we get down, we get like picnic baskets and wine glasses and all this stuff, dude. And I forgot to tell them <laughs> that it was I a nude beach. Yeah. <laughs> Then we laughed for like 45 minutes straight. They're like, nice one, Greg. Yeah. And there's some people were out. They were out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, oh. Yeah, yeah. They're doing some weird stuff, too. Yeah. They like, they're like looking for some attention. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's, a, it's a weird place. But yeah, UC San yeah. Diego is great. Yeah. UC San Diego is the, it's a very academic school. It's a very much like a science and research, uh, you know, school. Um, it's funny because I... It's not I, art, huh? That doesn't have that much to do with art. No, no, not at all. I, and I didn't know, I didn't know. For me, I was just, college was a ticket out. Mm. My junior year of high school, I realized, I was like, I only have one more year left, you know, after this. I was like, what am I going to do? I'm like, I need to, I need an escape plan. <laughs> yeah. So I really buckled down. I was like, I'm going to take all the AP, AP classes I can. I'm going to just, I got to get to college. So cool, dude. Yeah. Respect, man. It's pretty cool that you can say that to yourself. And implement the discipline and get it done. Yeah. You know how unique of a skill set I think that that is? That's very unique. Where do you think that drive comes from? That focus? The f I don't know. It's weird because I almost... I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. I, I, honestly, I, I think that it comes from like survival. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, it's like at that time... It was like, I, I need to get out. Like I needed to, what was driving me was, I hate to say it at that time, it was pain. It was like, I don't, what was painful? I don't, I don't like 
this, you know, broken home situation I was born into, you know, living in poverty, you know, it's like, it's like a kind of gang infested, you know, area. It was, it was just like, yeah, there's a lot of just pain there. So it was being pushed by pain. And later in life, you know, once I was kind of out of that and established myself as an adult, uh, that's a really powerful driving force. You know, a lot of people are just like, oh, I want to, I need to prove myself or I don't know, I got picked on when I was a kid. And so now I want to get really rich and like prove to the world how cool I am or whatever. Like it, it's, it's a certain kind of energy that's available to you and yeah. it, will, it will take you far. But when you start to get pulled by something rather than pushed by something, it completely changes the game. When you start to get pulled by a higher vision, pulled by a calling, right? And I feel like that's what I've been able to shift into now. I'm not driven by pain anymore. Now I'm pulled by the vision and the mission and the calling, you know? Mm. Has a religion or a spirituality come into effect at all in your life? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For me, I, when I, didn't, was that? I didn't grow up religious at all. Um, my mom, both my parents were a bit of hippies. My mom was a hippie, so she was always like, she was spiritual, but I always thought she was really weird. You yeah. Know? She was into weird, like, just like weird hippie shit. <laughs> and yeah. Like, and I was very much like re rebellious against that. I was like, you're weird. I just want to be a normal person, you know? And then, of course, I think it's just in my blood that in probably my mid twenties, I started just looking up at the sky and being like, "What's actually like going on out there?" Apparently, the universe expands forever, right? Yeah, like what? Like where? This how? Is, yeah, how? Like how is my heart beating right now? And I like it's just doing that. <laughs> you know, like I started like asking some of these uh, philosophical, esoteric questions, and uh, it kind of sent me on like a quest for just learning about spirituality and discovering my own spirituality which i'm pretty tapped into now when did you say that all kicked off it's like my mid-20s mid-20s yeah, probably 25 yeah do you have anybody you look up to in that space mm, yeah when i live i was this was when i was living in la there is a spiritual center there called uh called agape mm. and there's this guy michael bernard beckwith and so he he was he was in that movie the secret if you ever saw yeah the secret he's been on oprah multiple times like he's a pretty leading force and figure in spirituality new age spirituality we, we would call it but yeah i had the i got invited to go to his spiritual center uh by a, by a friend a long time ago and i went pretty regularly for you know for a while and just to be able to go and see that guy every every week it's amazing it's really cool yeah so that that was a very like formidable you know chapter in my life doesn't get much taught, better than that taught me a lot yeah as far as the, the content source, that guy's at, yeah. at the, the tip of the spear. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, you know, globally renowned spiritual leader. Yeah. You could say. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Badass. What the heck? Yeah. Go figure. You stepped in it. So, yeah. That was like, uh, you know, that's like universal alignment, man. I think it was supposed to happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been using the words divine orchestration a lot. I yes. find myself saying that a lot. Yeah. Like, just like everything is divinely orchestrated. Like, everything is happening for a reason everything is happening curated by something out there that's i don't know what it is i don't know what you, what you want to call it you know what i mean but yeah. it's not just us no. and, and uh i feel like the more i lean into that the more i believe in that the more miracles and just synchronicity and undescribable things start to happen to the point that now i just say like of course when something yes. really like weird synchronicity is happening i'm like yeah, of course when you're tapped in believe that everything is sort of happening yeah, that and divine orchestration yeah. how, how that word those that that phrase has been coming up so often for me the past uh, i'd say six months tapped in tapped in what does that mean for you mm, yeah for me I, I when i when it comes to, to spirituality is really how i'm referring to it i think of it as like there is an infinite abundance of spiritual energy energy that is yeah. powering the entire universe infinite, dude. infinite. Like yep. every little atom that's in this table every little cell in our body is powered by this life force energy and if you imagine like the electricity in the wall right all you got to do got to plug plug into it yeah you got to tap in tap plug, it in pl plug in tap just tap tap it in tap 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 it in it's right there right so that's that's how i look at it right when you're when you're when you're tapped in, when you're plugged in, uh, you're able to access a certain type of energy that is beyond just us. We have our our energy that is contained within our little human body, our physical energy, mental energy, emotional energy, all that is like inside of us. But spiritual energy is outside of us. Spiritual energy is the rest of it. And so when you can get into alignment with that spiritual energy, plug yourself into the outlet, 
you know, there's so much, you know, inspiration in your spirit, right? Yes. Inspiration. Inspired. Inspired that means in to be in spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I heard that the other day. Wow. So you got a lot going on for yourself right now. It seems like, you know, you know what I think of really good messages from your story is that just because these things happen in our lives, these, these tragic things, or you're in these negative, these toxic environments, that you still have the power of choice. Yeah. And that is, I think, the highest power that we get as free people, as free wills, is, is choice. Yeah. It seems like you chose a way that was a way of living, rather, that was beneficial to you. You were able to say no to the norm, to, do, to, to being rebellious, and to being that, like, that, what do you call it, degenerate kid, mm. which is how, man, I wish I could put my finger on that. Like, where did that come from, dude? Was it your heart, do you think? Uh, honestly, was it your morals? Would you, did they, did your parents raise you to be like a, you know, don't do bad things? Like, where, well, where did that come from? You know, well, what it was for me, like I was yeah. explaining earlier, yeah. is, uh, you know, I was the, I was the middle child. So I had somebody, you know, I have two sisters. We're all born in the same family. We all made very, very different decisions and have created different lives for ourselves. I think having an older sister that went first and seeing a lot of the mistakes that she made or just a lot of the choices, I won't call them mistakes, I'll call them the choices that she was making and the consequence of those choices gave me an upper hand because I was like, oh, if you make those choices, these are the consequences. Do I want to have those consequences? I don't think that I do. So I'm going to make different choices. Mm. Right. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. that was a big part of it. The other part of it for me too, is I, I have always had something that I'm passionate about. Always had something that has lit me up that I've cared about. I think first it was drums and skateboarding. So I always had something to put, That's my, cool. put, put myself into Yeah. that I guess kind of kept me out of trouble, mm. you know? Mm. That's yeah. a good golden nugget right there. I think it's huge because I think it's what's missing for a lot of young kids is they don't they don't have something that lights them up right let's find the thing that lights you up there you go with light again yeah right being the light in the dark it's a it's a common thing we bring up on this show yeah damn yeah, we yeah we need that we need something to to pour ourselves into yeah so we got a, a bright future ahead of us yeah. right and uh where do you see yourself taking taking the next steps in your journey and then let's let's like talk about immediate and then overall big yeah. picture, dude. This stuff is gas. Let's go. Yeah, baby. yeah. Well, immediately right now, I am working on building out a group coaching program because I'm I've always worked one on one with people. I've had some groups that I've run before, but in order to scale my business, I need to reach more people. Mm. And not only scale my business, in order to reach more people, because that's what my mission is, I need to start creating new ways to do that. So it's shifting into not just working with one person, but running groups mm. is the next focus and the immediate focus right now for me. And then yeah. I have been feeling a bit of a calling to potentially move back to LA. I'm not decided on that yet. It's not a choice I've made yet. Wow. But I think, wow. Yeah. Well, ultimately I, I want to be working with the biggest artists in the world and yeah. I want to be coaching the Taylor Swifts and the Tiestos and the, you know, the, the A-listers. And so I think it would make sense to position myself to, to be back there mm. as much as I, as much as I love Austin. I don't know. Might, maybe I, maybe I do a, a bi, bi-coastal thing as well. Interesting. Um, but I think kind of being back in the mix, back in the industry might be a part of that. Dang. Yeah. Cause we got a lot of live music out here. Yeah. The I mean, DJ scene, no. More than enough. Well, you know, my, my business, I can run it all online. Yeah. Um, I don't work yeah. with anybody in person, really. Okay. But, um, but just, you know, just to get into some of those uh, those tighter circles, you know. Uh, your network is your net worth, as they say. And yeah. in the music industry especially, it is all about who you know. So just to be there and be present and, you know, be hanging out with managers and record labels and promoters and stuff again, just to be there would would probably make a would probably make sense but we'll see i don't know we'll see see what god wants we'll see what the universe wants for me let's see and would you say a lot of people you want to impact a lot of people what does that actually mean 
You got a number in mind? Is there a number of people you want to help in the world? No, I mean, I think, uh, no, I don't, I don't have a number attached to it. I don't, yeah, I'm not, I don't, honestly, I don't think I'm trying, I'm not trying to change millions. Like what I do is niche. Yeah. You know? So yeah. it's not like the millions. It's not like I'm not trying to try to change the world, but there's like this little corner. Like that's my corner. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I just want to, I want to help my smartly so yeah and how many people are 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 there you know and and also even in that corner not everybody is for me and i'm not for everybody i'm not trying to impact all of them just the ones that vibe and resonate with me and what i'm all about and just my style and my energy those are my people Mm -hmm. i don't know how many of those people are out there but i know that there's a lot more out there than the ones than than i've reached so far yeah i know there's a lot more oh my gosh look dude let's say i'm a dj and I call you up. I'm like, man, I want some help blowing up, going to the top of the charts. Yeah. What's that process look like when they call you up? Yeah. How do you do it? Yeah, for sure. Well, I think most people are going to come thinking that that has to do with my branding or my marketing. What's the business stuff that I need to do? And I'm going to look more on like, what are you doing in your life? Yeah. Like, who do you need to be? Yeah, who do you need to be? You know, yeah. like, what's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Yeah. What kind of people are you hanging out with? What's your relationship look like? What kind of, you know, what's your, you know, your health and your energy. My whole thing is like, I want to get you to be in the most primed energetic state possible. You want to make the best music possible. If you want to be the most productive, you got to be inspired, excited. You got to feel good. So I want to, I want to get my clients to be living in that best energetic state. Dude. You know? Yeah. And then, then you, you know, then you're going to write your hit record. You know, then you're going to really... Uh, show up online in a way that that your audience feels attracted to and your audience is going to grow so it's really like i'm really life coaching um at that fundamental more foundational stage with an extreme understanding of being a music producer yeah which yeah there's a very particular set of challenges that an artist faces when they're trying to chase this goal trying to chase this dream that society tells them is impossible or they have a one in a million chance of doing right right? and so having belief having a clear vision and just ultimate confidence and belief and energy to show up every day and put in the work you know that's that's a a, a necessary 100 percent necessary part of of the of the process so Mm. that's what i help people with all right so 20 years down the road you're, you're you and your future self. Yeah. What are you guys high-fiving about? 20 years down the road. Dude, I'll be almost 60. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I'll be 58. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to be in a, I'm going to be the drummer in a cover band that just plays like rock covers at like the local bar. Yeah. Because you made it. Yeah. And you want to chill. Yeah. 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 At 68 for sure. Or 58. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be like, you Dope. know, probably have a family, live in San Diego, mm-hmm. just wear board shorts and sandals all the time. Bro. And that's the like, life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. Yeah. I could dig it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's one possibility. I, I mean, that's still young too. That's still very young. I think I'll still be serving and, and, and working in some way. I feel like at that stage, you know, you're kind of like getting to be like an elder at that point, mm. you know? And so I think helping, you know, with, uh, I'll still be serving and giving and teaching and coaching and mentoring and yeah. capacity. Maybe it won't be with artists. Maybe it'll be with, you know, young men at that point, right? Maybe it'll be in, in a different capacity, but that's because you're still a coach. It's never going to go away. It's who I am. Right. You might have some sons yeah. that are in the rugby team. Yeah. You could be the, the rugby coach, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And or live it. Yeah. Or some girls that are some daughters that are on the rugby team. There you go. Little savages. That's true. Yeah. Um, man, that's cool. That's cool. So I got a little, little fun game we're going to play to wrap this up today. Okay. Yeah, you guys say the first word or words that come to your mind. I love this game. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to keep it Austin centric. Okay. We'll see how we do. Okay. Right. Best gym in Austin. On it. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Best best vegan place in On it. Hey, in, in Austin. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> best steakhouse Ooh, in Austin. Best steakhouse. I, I honestly haven't been to any steakhouses. Here. Best date night spot. Ooh, uh, I'm a big fan of a little little uh, mini golf at Peter Pan. Dope. Favorite movie? Favorite movie ever? Ever. Terminator 2. Wow. Favorite actor? Ooh. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal. Dream vacation spot? Dream vacation spot. Mars. <laughs> and last but not least, who is one person 
that you want to meet and have an hour long conversation with that you have not met yet that is alive? The Rock. You want to talk to The Rock? Yeah. Dwayne Rock Johnson. Yeah, that'd be dope. Well, you can catch him at freaking um at, at In and Out Burger. Where? Yeah, because apparently it's his favorite spot. Oh, okay. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. put his thing on his Instagram. Yeah. Hit him up. Dude. Are you just <laughs> Yeah. Who was this? Yeah. Someone asked me that question recently. I was like, who who are five people yeah. that that you could uh that I would want? And yeah, it was The Rock, um, Tony Robbins. Actually, I would say I think Rick Rubin. Who's that? Rick Rubin is he's one of the most successful music producers out there. Mm. Not like a DJ music producer, but he found Def Jam Records from his dorm room Dang. in Brooklyn uh, and was behind like Run DMC and the Beastie Boys, like these, you know, OG 80s rappers. But then he's produced everybody from like Slayer, Jay-Z, Red Hot Chili Peppers. He's just, Ooh. he's like a, he's just like the artist whisperer, like creative genius guru. Yeah. You've probably seen him online. He's like big dude with the, with a beard, white, white, white beard. I'll, I'll send you some. Yeah. Photos. If I seen him, I'll probably yeah. recognize him. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. I'll, I'll say Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin. Yeah. You think he knows Coke LaRock? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I had Coke LaRock on my radio show in college one time. Yeah. As a guest. And I wonder if I can connect you through him. Cool. Yeah. He was a nice guy. So you had a radio station in college? Yeah. Okay. You've been doing this for a while. A little bit. You're OG. A little, yeah. Seasoned vet. Long time cool man yeah we're getting better by the day yeah you're good you're good thanks dude yeah. so um uh, man this is freaking awesome like this is there's so many knowledge bombs that were dropped today i hope people really really listen up to, to what you had to say man yeah no, <laughs> because we're, like we're this kind is of all over the place. we're talking with a coach here yeah folks we're talking with a, a bona fide mindset coach so like this is this is awesome uh what would you say to your friends and family the people that are going to listen to this in a hundred years, what kind of message you want to leave with them? I love you. Yeah. Yeah. Love you. Yeah. Love you very much. Would you give me any advice? Um, be yourself. Be yourself. Yeah. Be, be authentic. That's good. Yeah. Authentic. But, yeah. Be authentic. Be yourself. Have the courage to know who you are and to be who you are. And don't worry about anybody that doesn't understand you or accept you. Just do you, boo. Yeah. Do you, boo. Nick Sherwin. Thanks, dude. Thank you, brother. Till next time, folks. Stay fired up. Cheers. Cheers.